Hey everybody and welcome to this tutorial by Lavender Sewing Patterns. Today I'm going to be making the oversized raglan sweatshirt. I've already printed and prepared my pattern pieces as well as cut out my fabric. The fabric I'm using today is this really pretty sweatshirt fleece fabric. I've also prepared my ribbing. I'm going to be sewing this sweatshirt using both my regular machine and my overlock or serger. If you only have a regular machine, that's totally fine. You can make it using only that. I'm currently wearing the tunic length of the raglan sweatshirt. This one is actually a size bigger than my regular size because it's super cold outside and I want something that's super comfy. So the first thing I'm going to do is to attach the ribbing to the pocket. So I start by folding it in half, putting a pin in one end and in the other. Then I'm just going to fold it in two and pin it in the middle. So I have three points here. And the same with the other one. So for my pocket piece now, I'm going to make sure I get the same measurements. Because the ribbing is smaller, it does need to stretch. So I want to make sure that it's evenly stretched. So I'll do one pin in each side, line them up, and put it in the middle. And then I'll do the same for the other side. So now I'm going to attach the ribbing on the right side of the fabric. So I start in the corners and then do the middle one, just lining them up and moving in and I'm just reattaching it there. Now the same on the other side. Now I'm going to overlock these together. Here you have to use a stretch seam. I made these shorter. So instead of the one seam seam allowance on each side, I actually made it 0 0.6. Because that's how much seam allowance my overlocker is using. So I just start slightly and then pulling it to make sure that the ribbing is pulled but not your fabric. There you have one side. both sides completed. Now I'm going to sew a straight stitch slightly below the ribbing in the pocket. And I'm going to fasten the seam allowance, the seam, 
to the pocket. to cut off all the seams and make sure they are secure. So now I'm going to attach to the sweater. And I'm realizing this should definitely have been done before I sewed the jumper together. So in the video, let's pretend that you have not actually sewn the jumper together. So I start by aligning it to the bottom. Then I take my ruler and measure that both sides are equal distance from the sides. So then you fold down the side seams and pin it. And then you do the same on the other side. And you do the same to the top. you can pin it to the shirt or you can use what I'm using which is fabric glue. So I'm just using it to attach the pocket to the sweatshirt. And since I'm making this um, for the jumper length this will the bottom will be secured with the ribbing. So we can just leave this open. Now we're going to fasten it to the front. have a pocket. So now we just have to trim off all the loose thread. Here you can use either just a regular needle or you can also use a twin needle. If you're making the tunic you should just place it along the cut line for the jumper. But then you fold in the bottom and sew that as well so that you close it. So now we are going to start sewing the sweater together. Place the front and the back pieces right side together, pin the sides and sew. So there are a couple of different ways that you can sew this together. I 
am going to sew it together using a straight seam and then I'm going to overlock the side. You don't have to use a stretch seam because it's so oversized the seams don't need to be stretched. You can also sew it by just using the overlock or serger or with an elastic seam on your sewing machine. Do the same on the other side. The body is finished and now we're doing the arms. So fold the sleeves in two lengthwise, right sides together, and pin. Now we're sewing it and remember to use the one centimeter seam allowance. And then the other sleeve. So I've done all the side seams and before sewing the sleeve seam, I'm actually just gonna go over it with an overlock or a serger. This isn't a necessary step, but I just feel like it gives it a nicer finish. going to sew the sleeves to the body. Start by turning one of the sleeves right side out. And just make sure that you get the right side and place it inside the sweater or the main body. And then we just pin it in place. We've also made sure to align the underarm seams. So now we're just going to sew a stitch around the edge. Then I just take some time to just make sure that I've matched the seams. Now you've finished one of the sleeves. perfect match. Now we're 
we're doing the other sleeve. making sure those things are aligned. And that's the other seam. So again, now I'm just going to go to my overlocker slash serger and um, overlock around the edges. So it's usually a lot easier to do this when I'm doing it both simultaneously and not making a video because then I just have them right next to each other. But because of the positioning of the camera, I just kind of need them to be in the same space. So this is usually it takes me a lot quicker. Can turn your sweater right side out. Just mm. yep, yeah. and there you go. There it is. So there's actually another way you can sew it together. I just find that this way gives it a prettier results because you get this more of a squared shape in the armholes. So what you can do is just sew the sleeve and the bo uh, bodice together first and then you do the whole side seam at the end. So it's kind of a personal preference. So you can decide yourself what you want to do. Now we're going to start with um, preparing our ribbing. So I'm just going to take this and put it to the side for now. So now I'm actually going to show you two ways on how you can do the ribbing. So this is the bottom piece for the hem. So what you do is you put the short sides together and pin it. you sew. There you have a nice seam and then later when we're attaching it to our bodice we're going to fold it in half and then attach it. But what you do get then is a much bulkier seam. So I'm going to show you a different way on how to do it. To just, so that you just use one seam. So here is the ribbing for the cuff. You first 
fold it in half and then you fold it again. So basically what happens is you will have one seam here and when you turn it we're just gonna have that one seam so show it to you again fold it in half like you would on the other one. But then you fold it again. tie off the end so that seam is secure and then I can just open it up and you'll get a much flatter seam we compare it to this one I don't know how much you can tell but this one is quite chunky and this one is a lot slimmer so I'm going to make the other cuff the same by folding it in half and then folding it in half again For the neckline, I actually, it's so slim that I actually find it a bit difficult to do this method because I just find that it, you, it's hard to make it perfectly perfect. So then this time I'm just doing the folding it in half and sewing it. And then when I'm attaching it, We'll just attach it like this. It will be a bit bulkier, but I think it works better for uh, for the neck ribbing. So now we're going to attach the ribbing to the sweatshirt. Let's start with the neckband. So here we're going to do exactly the same as we did on the pocket. Folding it in half and measuring equal distance. For this, I would probably go with either four or eight um, pins. If you're quite beginner, I would put more pins in. I'm just gonna do four. Measuring out, equal distance. And then if you will do eight, you can just add more clips. So here you start with the back. And 
then you can do the front. Attach those and then you can find out exactly where the middle of them are. You can really decide where you want the seam to be. You can have it in one of the side seams if you want. I'll just put it straight in the back. And I'm also going to start sewing in the back. do a couple of C stitches first and then I'm going to stretch the ribbing for the seams I also always just like to keep them to the same sides so I always point them towards the sleeves So this one, I'm facing inwards towards the sleeve. So when I come to where I started, I'm actually just gonna sew a bit over the first seam and then I'm just gonna take it out. So I'm making sure that I don't cut my current um, over the and then I'm just gonna fold the fabric back and get quite a nice, nice finish. Then just securing the seam. And there you have the neckband. So I'm going to sew a straight stitch here, but I'll do that after I'm finished with all the other ribbing. So now I'm going to do the sleeves. And these ones, if you remember, they only have one seam. So I'm going to do four on this one as well. So I start with the back and then do the sides and the same for the sleeve. And then I just make sure that I'm lining up the two seams. So what I do is I make sure that the overlock seam goes one way and the other seam goes the other way. If it both goes the right way, it gets more bulky. And also this way I can kind of like feel where the seams are so I can make sure that they're aligned. So I'm actually going to sew this the opposite way. This is a size uh, 36. So it's quite small in the arms. So I just find that it gives me a bit better overview. And it's also, I find it a bit easier to keep the ribbing um, stretched. one sleeve done and cuff done now we're doing the other side so 
So now I'm going to do the bottom piece. So I've divided the hem ribbing and the hem into eight equal parts. Now I'm going to attach it together. So I'm lining the seams together in the sides. Again, this is a bit of a personal preference. You can have it either in the side or in the middle of the back. I just, I prefer the sides. I think it looks a bit prettier. So I'm going to start in the back seam. Well, it's the side seam, but the back of the ribbing. just one seam left. So I start in the back and do this straight seam attaching the seam allowance to the sweatshirt. Just trimming the threads. And we're done. you for watching this video if you have any questions just let me know